am Miss Hearn. Let's get started. Let's talk about counting in different number bases. So we're going to start with the base we're all familiar with, which is base 10. Most likely, the way we came up with base 10 was the fact that we have 10 fingers. And at first, small children learned to count their fingers. And then we eventually introduced them to the symbols that we've assigned to these numbers. Um, in the base 10 number system, we only have 10 symbols, 0 through 9. So if we want to count values larger than 9, we have to start representing them with multiple symbols. So here we've listed all of the numbers from 0 to 149, and we see a pattern emerge. We notice that each time at the bottom of a column when we run out of digits, we have to roll over to a new place value. From 9, we have to roll over to 10, for example. And from 99, we have to roll over to 100, a three-digit number. Notice also that every tenth digit Every multiple of 10 ends in 0. Now let's consider what these digits mean once we have more digits. Say the number that has 7 ones in it. So each one of these numbers has a different value. Even though they all are the number, the digit 1, they each represent a different value based on their position. That's because the base 10 number system that we use, the decimal system, is a positional system. Place values range from 1, 10, 100, and so on, and they can get as large as we want, and they're all powers of 10. Once you put in different values besides 1, you end up multiplying the face value times the place value. So in this number, the fourth digit from the right is the number 6, and based on its position, we multiply it by 1,000 or 10 to the third. So really, that 6 represents 6,000. So now let's compare that to base 5 counting. Base 10 is not the only positional system. In fact, the possibilities are infinite and depend only on the number of symbols that we use. Let's think about if we only, say, used one of our hands for counting. If our, our basic digits were based on just one hand and we had 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, only five symbols to represent our numbers, then in order to get to the next larger number, which we normally would call 5, we're going to have to use two digits. We're going to roll over to the next place value, 1, 0. And then the number that we know as 6 in base 5 would be 1, 1. And 7 in base 5 would be 1, 2, and so on. Instead of having the base 10 system we're used to, we would have this system. It still has a pattern to it, but it repeats more frequently. So we run out of digits and roll over to a new place value more often. Looking at this pattern, we know that after 44 comes 100. What do you think would come after 244? If you guessed 300, zero, zero, you're correct. And actually, I really shouldn't say 244. I should say which number follows 244, because that number 2 doesn't represent 200 in this number system. Which number precedes 1000? Zero, zero, zero? Notice that 44 four rolled over to 100. Zero, zero. So, which three digit number is the largest three digit number before we roll over to four digits? In base 5, that's going to be 444. Four, four. Along the top there, we have the multiples of the base, in this case, base 5. All the multiples of 5 end in 0 in a base 5 system. Let's consider what happens when we have a whole string of numbers here, seven ones again. Again, each one of these digits represents a different value based on its position, but the base is different. So we actually have powers of 5 now, 1, 5, 25, 125, and so on. If we wanted to know what this number would be equivalent to in the base 10 number system, we have some work to do. We would have to take each one of the digits, write down how much it's actually worth, add it up, and we find out that in base 10, this is actually 19,531. The more digits are required to represent numbers in base 5, a smaller base. If we throw in a face value bigger than 1, we have to multiply the face value times the place value. In this case, the 6 would represent 6 times 5 to the third, or 6 times 125, which is 750. Let's look at a base that's actually larger than 10 and see how we would deal with that. We're going to look at base 12. So imagine yourself in a society where instead of counting fingers, we counted the segments on our fingers. So there are 12 of those, but we're going to use um, a base 12 system. 
So we need extra symbols. We need two extra symbols so that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B. And then once we run out of those symbols, we're going to go to 1, 0. There are 12 symbols from 0 through B in the base 12 system. Well, instead of the base 10 system that we're used to, it's going to take longer before we run out of symbols in each column and roll over to the next place value. When we get to B, we roll over to 1, 0. When we get to BB, we roll over to 1, 0, 0. Which number would follow 1, 2, B, the last number on our chart? Well, it would be 1, 3, 0. Which number would precede 1, 0, 0, 0? That would be the largest three-digit number, which would be B, B, B. Each place value is a power of the base, so in this case, a power of 12. These ones actually represent the values 1, 12, 144, and so on. The number with seven ones in it, at, in base 10, would be the sum of those numbers, 3,257,437, which is a much larger number because it takes fewer digits in base 12 to get a larger number. When we throw in some face values higher than 1, we have to multiply by the face value. And so in this case, 6 times 12 to the third is 6 times 1,728. And this 6, instead of uh, representing 6,000 as it would in a base 10 number, it actually represents our base 10 number, 10,368. So let's practice counting in different bases. We're going to practice counting in base 3, base 8, and base 16. You always start by listing the symbols that you're going to use from 0 to the largest number. Let's call that number pound. That's always going to be one less than the base. So as soon as you reach the number pound, the largest symbol, you're always going to have to follow that with a 1, 0. Just like in base 10, we followed the largest digit 9 with the number 10. And you list the two-digit numbers by increasing the ones digit. And every time you get a pound in the ones place, you're going to have to roll over to the next higher digit. And you keep doing that until you reach pound pound, the largest two-digit number. Following that is 100. In the base 10 system, it's the number 100. Then you're going to list the three-digit numbers following the same pattern until you get to pound, 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 and so on, repeating the process. Let's try this process with a small base first, base 3. So we first start listing the symbols, 0, 1, 2, then we roll over to, to 1, 0, do all the two-digit numbers up to 2, 2, then we get 1, 0, 0, do all the three-digit numbers up to 2, 2, 2, then we get 1, 0, 0, 0, and we continue on from there. Let's try base 8. What are the symbols that we're going to use in base 8? Well, they're going to go up to 1 less than 8 or 7. So we have 0 through 7 until we roll over to 1, 0. Then we do the two-digit numbers, always going up to 7 and repeating, until we get to 7, 7 and roll over to 100, until we get to 7, 7, 7 and roll over to 1, 0, 0, 0, and you continue from there. If you get to 7777, you're going to roll over to 10000 and so on. Now let's try one a base greater than 10, base 16, which is an important base. It's hexadecimal and it's used in computer systems. We need 16 digits and we only have 10, so we add 6 more to get um, up to the number 15, which is represented with an F. Once we get up to the highest symbol, we roll over to 1, 0. Then we have to go through all of the two-digit numbers, each time increasing the ones digit by 1. So we have 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, all the way up to 1, 9, 1, A, 1, B, all the way up to 1, F. Okay, but those are just the two-digit numbers starting with the number 1. We also have those starting with a 2, a 3, a 4, and so on. Once we get up to the two-digit numbers starting with a 9, we go all the way up to 9F, and now it's time to roll over to A0, A1, and so on, up to AF, B0, B1, and so on, up to BF. 
It's just a repeating pattern. Then we're going to go all the way up to F0, F1, F2, all the way up to FF. And we know that when we hit FF, because F is the largest symbol we have, we have to roll over to the next place value, 100. Zero, zero. Then you would just repeat this process, starting at 101 and so on, all the way up to FFF, and then 1000. Zero, zero, zero. If you were to continue, you would know that when you got to F, 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 then the next number would be 100000 zero, 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 and so on.